Welcome back to our module on grant budgeting basics. In this section, we'll be covering the budget justification and the budget narrative. This is where you are showing your work. How did you get to those calculations that are in the grant budget form? This is how we connect the dots between our budget form and our narrative, the responses that we've provided in our application. When we think about a budget justification and budget narrative, as I said, we're showing our work. This is helping the reviewer to understand what are the calculations that we have done in order to put our budget together? What is the homework that we have conducted in order to make sure that our personnel expenses are correct or we have the right amount in supplies or in travel? When we are presenting our budget narrative, our budget justification, what happens is not so often that the numbers don't align in terms of a budget figure between one document and another, or that columns or rows don't add. Rather, it's that the story that the numbers tell don't align with our grant narrative. For example, perhaps in our program design elements, in the logic model, we have some staff listed in resources and maybe the staff listed in the resource section for our logic model, they are the same as the responsible staff in some of our work plan, but that person isn't listed in the grant budget in our justification. That inconsistency will certainly put up a flag for the reviewers. Or maybe another example, we have described in our need statement We've talked about the barrier of transportation for our clients in a rural community, but when it comes time to look at the budget and the travel line item, and therefore our budget justification or narrative related to that line item, we find that there's no mileage. Well, how is it that you're going to go to the homes of the clients in the rural community without having the mileage called out in the budget and therefore in the justification and narrative. Hmm, again, it's going to raise a flag, raise a question for the reviewer. We are likely therefore to lose points if we're being scored, and that's going to decrease our competitiveness in the application itself. So when we think about a budget justification or narrative, we do not want to assume our reviewer's understanding of what our numbers mean. We want to use, when formatting allows, basic tables or charts as a way to lay out the numbers so that it's easy for the reviewers to digest. So in this real example, what can we see? We can see that, well, a five-year project budget isn't equally divided by five years. Rather, there was a decreasing amount of funding that was received to reach the total of the 2.5 and change. Had we not included that table on the breakout per year, the reviewer might have assumed that it was 2.569 million divided by five and that it was actually equal over each of the five years. A basic assumption that could have made for some concern with the reviewers. So this basic chart and table, it's helping to make sure the reviewers have a clear understanding. Let's talk about some other expenses and how the budget justification can help us. In this example, we're talking about travel. This is very basic information. Well, let's think about travel for a moment. And in fact, let me ask you a question. If I said that you had a reimbursement rate of 56 cents per mile, and I had given you a budget of $1,762.56, without getting your calculator out, would you know how many miles were funded? Probably not. You probably, as a grant reviewer, would be getting out your calculator to figure out how many miles would we be driving. So wait a second, what happened? We can see how much the reimbursement rate was. There's a total, it's shown per year how much is there, but we're missing an element of our formula. What we just made our reviewers do is some basic algebra. We made them solve for a variable. We basically said, 
what is the value for x? And x was the number of miles that would be driven. We don't want to leave our reviewers in that situation. It's not that they can't do the calculation, but that distracted them from their reading and digestion of the work. They got distracted. And hopefully they come back into the justification where we want them to. Let's make it simpler. Let's make sure that we include and document every element of our calculation we used to get to our numbers. Now, sometimes some of those grant budget templates that take a little bit of translation from our internal document to theirs actually give us some great ideas for how we could document and lay out a very clear justification. In this example, this is considered the budget justification, but it's not narrative in the way that I just showed you the last two examples. Rather, it's table-based. It was a multi-tab Excel spreadsheet. There was a summary on the first tab, and then each subsequent tab was the justification for the cost on the summary tab. So you could type in things like the description of the item, the quantity, the unit cost, and it would calculate for you the proposed expenditure. That was really helpful because it ensured that you didn't miss a single element of the formula. The spreadsheet wouldn't work unless you completed all the fields. You don't need to mimic exactly this, but if given a choice, if thinking about what you might present in a budget narrative or justification, perhaps you'd find inspiration in these very small and basic tables Maybe you want to try using them as the tables in your own justification or narrative. The basic rule, though, to keep in mind when it comes to budget justifications and narratives, make sure that you're providing details, that you're providing all the elements of the calculations of the formulas you have used to get to the number in your budget. You asked for support of a prorated amount of office space. It's not enough to simply say that and provide a number. What is the square footage? What was the cost per square foot that was used? And therefore, how did you get to the number? All the details. We want to keep it simple, but we want to provide all the details so that our reviewers never feel the need to solve for a variable or to get out their calculator. Once you are done, with your budget justification, budget narrative, you've got it all laid out. You should first read the budget, then your actual full narrative to see how do they align. Were there any inconsistencies? You might find a few, but you've been really close to it, so you might not be able to see any of those inconsistencies before you move on, before you get ready to submit, ask a colleague, ideally not someone in finance, who has probably been helping you to work on this as well and is also probably too close to the material. Ask a colleague in your organization to review your proposal, to provide feedback, but to read it in the order of budget and budget justification and then narrative and to provide you with any feedback on any consistencies or accuracy questions that they might have based on their reading in that order. It puts them in a very different mindset to read budget and justification first and then the application because now they're thinking all about the numbers and it'll be easier for them to answer that question, to have that charge in terms of being a reviewer how does the budget or the budget justification align or not with the story that we have presented? Budget justification and budget narratives are often one of those application elements left to the end. I hope through the outline that I've given you for what type of information we include, how we might structure it, why we would use a table or chart, you understand the importance of this application element. It's not an afterthought. 
Rather, it's a critical component of our application story. And if you have any questions when you go to draft a budget justification or narrative, I want you to please reach out. You can drop me an email at any time. Diane at dhleonardconsulting.com. Well, we are almost all the way through our budget module. We have one section left to go, and I can't wait to have you join me for that conversation.